Okay, guys, just a quick one to let you know that I originally recorded this as one full episode, but I've decided to split it into two parts. So this will be part one and part two will be coming very soon. I hope you enjoy it. See you soon. Okay, so today, guys, we are back with punt or no punt. And obviously, everyone is expecting to see Bean today, but we do have a new guest on the show. Um, we're starting from the very bottom uh, with our guest today. Uh, we've got Steve, aka Stubbernst on PokerStars. How are you doing, Steve? I'm all right. Good evening. Uh, Steve is... Probably one of the first viewers on my channel, would you have said, Steve? Yeah, maybe. It's Original commentators, OG. Um, and I said that I'd be happy to have him on the on the channel for a punt or no punt. He's finally stumped up some hands. I think you got 10 or so today, bud. Is that right? 10 today. 10. So we're going to have a, a good old look through. I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but we'll try and fire through them at a little bit of a rate. So before we start with the hands, if you're new to punt or no punt, um, someone will come on the channel, generally Bean, but today it's Steve. I come on the channel, they'll bring us some hands from their database uh, and we'll decide whether they're a punt or not a punt. And the one rule is that, um, and Steve will confirm, I have not seen any of the hands before we see them today. Is that correct, Steve? That is correct. Perfect. And without further ado, let's move on to the first hand. So our first hand is the seven, eight of hearts. Now, before we start with this hand, these hands are from about a month's worth of play. Um, so he's been digging pretty deep as Steve for these punts. And if you want to say anything about these hands before we start, Steve, now is your opportunity to defend yourself before the fact. Uh, it isn't fair for me to defend myself. I just want a disclaimer that I am a massive punter. Um, I've also got some calls in here. Bean's just far more aggressive than I am. And I just call off very light in some massive spots sometimes. Okay. Uh, so some of these are bad shoves. Some of these are bad calls. So you're a but, passive um, punter, basically. I'm a passive punter, yeah. Okay, well, let's let's crack on with the eight seven hearts from the big blind here. Looks good. It falls to the small. Um, and he opens. Are you doing any three betting here, Steve? You'll know better than um, me. Whether we'll you are be or three not. betting here. Yeah, you'll yep. be three betting. Um, so we are doing some three betting. You mixing this or is this pure for you? Off the top of my head, <clears> I think <throat> this is a mix. Okay. And um, small blind calls, which is reasonable. We are a little bit deeper. Oh, this looks fun. <laughs> so queen five queen. Now, I assume you have ace five suited always, is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> and you've got probably queen 10, queen jack, king queen, ace queen, kings yeah. and aces. So we're doing pretty well. Um, king queen off some of the time, ace queen off all the time. Cool. So our opponent is probably going to have some fives as well. I'm not sure whether you're free betting five, six suited at all. Um, but that's going to... Five, six and five, four okay. is a mix. Okay. But he's going to have them always. So that is a consideration, but not a huge one, right? We're still going to have a pretty good advantage on this board in general. Uh, our opponent's going to have like a lot of 10-9 and stuff like that. We're definitely going to be able to start with a bet here. Um, seems reasonable, the bet size. You could go slightly bigger um, against a deeper stack, but the board is very dry. So we're often going to get folds here from the 10-9s that we're talking about. So it seems pretty reasonable to start with small. Opponent calls. Um, so now we're thinking, obviously, we block 7s and 8s, but you know stuff like Queen-10 for himself and Queen-Jack and obviously King-Queen could definitely be in there, right? He's not going to be four betting with much of that. Um, so we are now concerned about him having a queen. He can obviously have some fives, um, so can we, but he does, as we said, he probably has a few more. Um, but the heart is going to be a card that we do some continuing on. I think that's very fair. Um, and what are you thinking about sizing here, Steve? Uh, so this is where I'm looking to, to size up. Um, this is one of those cards that sends the, the red mist down right um so i'm looking i'm looking to size to put put it all in on the river yeah that's for value that's or... reasonable this may seem a little bit small in that case then um unless you'll okay. probably be doing some over betting um but you could maybe size up even a little bit more to pressure those hands you're definitely prob i mean you're probably not going to want to need to bet too much more to get folds from like pocket sixes i would say those would start folding but stuff like nines and tens you're probably going to meet some resistance blind versus blind i think so it's not like when he calls here, he only has a five or only has a queen, right? But the problem is, I don't think he's going to be doing any raising with five, with a five or a queen. Mm -hmm. So when he calls flop and turn, he's going to have a bunch of that going on. You know, it doesn't rule any of it out. He may do some raising on this turn with a five, but I think he should probably, to protect the rest of his range, call this call this whole range. What do you think? Um. Yeah, my process, my thought process is not that detailed in game. If I'm honest, I think when I size up in in this way, like there's a lot that I can, uh, there's a lot of better hands that I can make fold here. Yeah, um, we still have or not some. This is a, sorry, go on. We still have some pretty reasonable, you know, equity in when yeah, when called yeah. by anything, and also we obviously have still a range advantage, even though the five X is probably in his court. We still have obviously queens and and. Maybe an ace-queen advantage if he's going to be four-betting some frequency of ace-queen, you know? So, yeah, depends. Um, 
but as played he calls which i think i like i said i don't expect him to do anything really differently with tens he's still going to have which is a problem um how do we like our hand as a bluff here's always the problem when we get to the river right with with, with hearts in this spot our opponent could have backdoor hearts he could also have like queen x of hearts um queen x of hearts is probably going to be like an unpopular call for him because unless he has queen 10 which he's probably going to have to call down um yep. queen 10 uh, sorry queen x of hearts is gonna you know be blocking some of our bluffs at least the the x version of the queen 10 of the queen x so um you know this is the kind of thing he's probably going to float up to our flop size and maybe at some frequency raise and certainly maybe do some calling on the turn potentially to our sizing um so it's not like having eight seven is like the worst thing in the world i would say now the problem i think mainly with this combo is that we don't block any call downs right so it's a potential that he played some hearts like this but also the we have our main problem which is we don't we don't block any of his hands and it's not like tens is now in a tougher spot it's not at all in a tougher spot a queen's not in a tougher spot a five which is definitely going to be in there it's not a tougher spot so i just think i would rather have something like king jack here okay block, you, block the queens block some queen x um you know it just feels like we really when he takes this line and he's not really going to be doing like much of anything different with his value hands and this run out is just like pretty dead and considering we're not going to be probably betting tens on the turn i wouldn't have thought right um you'd know better than me if you are here but probably seem like no, a pretty good probably not. yeah so I, I i feel like this this is not a great spot to uh to bluff what do you think in the, in retrospect um i so I'm likely to choose combos like this where I think I just have like so little yeah. zero down value. That's I think true. like I'm, I'm more though. likely to check back. I think I'm more likely to check back if I have something like uh like an ace four of hearts where I've bricked out draws but could potentially still win against his missed hearts or something mm. like that. Yeah. Here I just like never win if I check back. So. Yeah. I mean it's gonna be hard for me to say I mean I like how aggressive we're being and we definitely have like a range advantage still we have queens where he doesn't um we have kings and aces where he doesn't and we're definitely going to want to do that with all of these all those hands obviously because even queen 10 we beat with, with with kings and aces um and probably ace queen as well so we do have a bunch of value like i don't think i'm going to be able to say this is a punt if we do go for it um but my my, my big problem with the hand is is how little we block um but aggression is never is never uh, really a, a too bad of a thing. It, I just have I just have a problem with. I don't think that the hearts are too much of a problem, but I do think you know the fact that opponent is going to have all his five x and all his queen x here and pocket tens, um, and then like not really have any double floated seven or eight of hearts. I guess is is a bit of a it's a bit of like a, a wash against that to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but um unblocking unblocking his cooldowns is, is pretty but we don't block any 5x or queen x or pocket tens obviously so um I'd, I'd rather have like a random 10 here like jack 10 you know and turn that into a bluff yeah blocking some some cooldowns i'm not i'm not i'd be interested to see what what people think of this but i have a i have a feeling that we could probably find some better combos here but not blocking any of his cooldowns his his uh line making sense of pretty much everything and then um you know Obviously, having the nut low is unfortunate, but that's why I probably don't mind it. We're going to have to find some bluffs here because we do have a shitload of value, let's be honest, right? Um, but I have a feeling that, depending on this opponent type, I don't know if you had him tagged or anything or, or we have information information on him at all. I've not got a lot of hands on him looking at, yeah. looking at my data. But he does call and he shows up with the king, queen of hearts, um, which obviously makes a lot of sense, right? Yep. Um, like I said, having the queen, uh, having the queen X of hearts is not great because the king of hearts is something that we're probably going to take, like king jack of hearts maybe. Um, so it's a tough one, mate. I, I think I'm going to go with no punt, um, but it is very close. It's a good start, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will take that. Yeah. So um, let us know what you think about that hand. We'll move on to hand number two. So in hand number two, looks like we've got pocket tens um, from middle position. Now Steve is up one nil. Um, against punts but i'm reliably informed that that's probably gonna be a little bit close along the way as well um opening up to 2.9 in the anti-game seems good we're super deep against villain number 13 the big line who calls and wondering how we managed to punt here queen queen eight and i think we can definitely start with c bet versus big blind range and sizing seems reasonable as well 
you could consider sizing up a little bit deeper, but I don't think it's too much of a consideration. Queen turn. I definitely want to look for value from an eight here. He's obviously not going to have pocket jacks. He could have like a random queen, obviously, but it's super unlikely given how many you know queens are out on the board. If it was a different position calling, like button or small blind, then he would have like way less queens than the big blind would do. So that is something to consider. Obviously, he's going to have more queens than any other position calling, right? Um, we're going to have some queens as well, but he's going to have a lot of 8x that can't fold flop. He's not going to really going to have, he could have pocket nines, um, but obviously not going to have tens um, and not jacks. So we're pretty much good unless he has, you know, the queen. And we decide to bet, which I think is good. And he calls. Four of hearts doesn't change anything. I think this is, this is an exceptionally easy fold. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the guy is just clearly, I mean, even if, Right, even if he doesn't have a queen, right? And, and like I'm saying about the queen X, so it's the queen of spades it has to be, right? But even though there's only one queen in the deck, it's not like he called him a button. It's not like he can only have like, obviously we block queen 10 of spades, but that would be much more of a factor if the button had called because the button's not going to have as much queen crap as you, as, as, you know, the big blind is. And we don't know, how, I don't know how bad this guy is, but he could potentially have stuff like queen three all the way through suited to queen nine. Now we're starting to look at a lot of combos, right? Um, yeah. Maybe ace queen off that doesn't raise in these positions. Maybe in these in this deep, which seems reasonable. Maybe king queen off doesn't obviously doesn't raise. I think you've got. I think you're going to run into a lot of queens here. And when he just like bombs it, I mean, we just we have thirteen blinds in here, man. Do you know what I mean? So the so the problem here for me I'm, is this makes no sense to me. Why anyone would play a hand in this way? Right, um, but at the same time, why would he bluff I, like I this under <laughs> Sorry? Well, at the same time, why would he bluff like this? Yeah, that makes sense. But some people do. It, it happens. Whether or not it happens to a frequency that is useful to us may be up for debate. I'm only going to give you so much time on the floor for this one, Steve, because this... I I don't know. I, this, it's pretty <laughs> indefensible. This is a an absolute pun. If, if you win, it's still a pun. <laughs> oh, he's got queen two off. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, obviously, he shouldn't have queen two off, but he has so much more queen X than all the other positions. Yeah. And just because there's one queen left doesn't mean he... I mean, if, if he has queen two off, right, you're super dead here, you know? Yeah. Um, Pretty dirty run out for you. But this... Uh, I mean, look how big the pot is, man. We had 13 blinds in there, and then we fired in the last 179. It's like you wanted to be on the show so desperately. <laughs> Jealous of being... We're one one here, Steve. This is a punt. I'm sure you. <laughs> I, I'm sure I, you understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, there's there's no debate. Let's move on to hand three. So in our third hand, hoping for some redemption, we have queen jack of clubs, and button o button three bets us, and we elect to call, which seems very reasonable. Not much to talk about there. Interesting spot here. We go for the check, and our opponent goes quite large. Now, um, how are you constructing check raise range here? I assume this isn't in it because you're probably going to have way too much if you do. I would put this in here purely because I think I can have all the sets here. I can have I, maybe not all the threes, but I, I will open threes at 50% and maybe I can have one Probably set shouldn't be calling at these stacked deaths with threes and probably not opening them. So I don't know whether you'll have threes, but obviously if you do have threes, then that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. But nines, I, I probably would say you shouldn't have them, but if you do have them, that's important for this conversation. Yeah, I will, um, have, I will have nines some some frequency. I, will have... Have, I actually think, I've, I, I actually think I'm, I, the way I thought about this hand was probably slightly wrong because he three bet larger than was standard. Yeah. Uh, he bet to 10 and I was out of position. So maybe some of these should have been trimmed out. I, but I, I felt like I have enough, you know, I have some 10, nine, I have some 10, some nines. You definitely should have tens and nines always. I don't think you should have threes, especially versus, like you said, larger three bet and from the yep. positions we're in. Um, the problem is if you if you start blasting off with like queen jack, all the suits, then I'd be concerned that if you're taking all your spades as well, you pretty much only have what ten nine and then nines and tens as your bluffs. Oh, sorry, as your as your yep. value, and then your bluffs just seem to be like all the Broadway spade hands, apart from Ace King. That's probably gonna going to do some four betting but the rest of them probably just going to yeah. call right so um yeah I i'd be concerned that you might have too many bluffs especially if you have something like eight seven of spades also maybe eight seven of diamonds which are better hands like if i'd, I'd prefer to just include eight seven of spades diamonds and then use queen jack spades diamonds okay. um but i mean obviously our opponent's going to have a pretty strong range right he can certainly have pocket tens 
you may not have pocket nines, but you can certainly certainly reasonably have them. It's not like we have a massive advantage here, you know, um, in terms of nut hands. But he also has a huge advantage in terms of over pairs, right? Because we're definitely probably not going to do do any four bane with, well, maybe not pure with queens, but we're certainly going to do it with kings and, and aces, right? So yeah. I think we have a little bit of a problem here when we use this hand as well, just based on how much value we have. Which that's fair? Yeah. This is pretty big. So we're going for turn, I guess. Yeah. The problem is that there's a lot of turns that we're not going to want to, especially, I mean, what, what I'm concerned about is that when he does call the 38 and a half, what are we, yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what are we really like <laughs> hoping for him to have? The problem is now that he's not going to fold an overpair with a spade and he has all of them and we don't block them. And we don't have a spade for removal against flushes that he can definitely have because he's definitely going to three bet with all of his like Broadway spade combos and then take this exact line with those. He may do some jamming over your, over your raise with, with them. What I think you're going to run into a lot here is is spade over cards. And the problem is, like, if you'd just done it with, like, the, the hands we were talking about, you'd have, like, a reasonable amount of bluffs here. Um, and then, yeah, you might have to go with the queen, uh, the king, the queen jack of diamonds, right? But if you're going with the hearts and the clubs and the diamonds, and I don't know what you're doing with all your eight sevens, um, then I think we're delving into punt territory yep. a little bit when we use this one as a bluff. I think our opponent with the SPR is going to never fold over cards with over pairs with a spade. He might never even fold over pairs, um, and we may have like, I mean, we always like to have fold equity, right? And then equity when called. I'm not sure how much of either we have. Yeah. You know when he calls 38 blinds, you know. I don't think he he can really fold his over pairs now, which he's going to have a lot. He certainly can't fold his sets, which is sets which he's going to have. Uh, he certainly can't fold any flushes, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And then the only thing we're really beating is like going to be like, I mean, he can't even float like ace king with an ace of spades, right? Can he? Because you made it, you made it so big on the flop. Yeah, the turn, the turn size was <laughs> uh, sorry, the flop size was too big. Large. Yeah, because now I just feel like everything that calls that is just no way folding to this. So I, I always like to give my opinion before I see the the action, and sure. I'm gonna and I'm gonna go with punt. I'm afraid, bud. So it's gonna be two one. <laughs> Two one to the pumps. <laughs> Opponent calls, which is shocking, and we run it twice. But uh, we are super dead <laughs> to the ace queen of spades, and that's a pretty reasonable hand for him to have, right? Um, yep. Yeah, not a fan, Steve. Uh, I'm liking, I'm liking the cojones, but <laughs> um, I have a feeling we have a little bit too much going on here. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. Now that you you list some hands, there's I, I'll check raise a lot on this board. That's so. okay, but like when it's okay to t shut down the turn. You know, this card's very okay. bad because we don't have a spade. <laughs> so we don't block any flushes, which obviously he can have. He can have all of them, all the big flushes. He doesn't have all the over pairs that have a spade in them. Um, we block a couple of those, but, you know, not a significant portion. I just have a problem with using, like, all of those hands and the sizing. Especially, like, when you use that sizing, I feel like you can get away. If, you, if you're going to include this on the flop, um, I feel like you can just get away on the turn after he calls the big bet. Okay. Um, because his continuing range is going to be sets, over over pairs, flush draws. Yeah. That's it. So like, one undone. What else is he going to continue with? Versus your size on the flop. Good hands. <laughs> well, yeah. And none of, none of which are really folding this turn at, at significant frequencies. And we need them to fold them. <laughs> if we have queen high, you know? Yeah. With no uh, spade. So, yeah, punt. Uh, yeah. We'll move on to the next hand. Okay, so on our next hand, we have Ace-10 of spades on the card. Pretty decent hand. And this is a pure three bet for me. And for you, it seems. Uh, sizing's a bit big. Why? Um, I think I tend to size up a little bit against small opens. Um, and I don't think I do it particularly well. Okay. Um, but I'm very aware of giving people good odds to continue, even when they're out of position. Yeah, I think we can just make the seven and a half. But let's not talk too much about that. We want to see the punt. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about giving you the first one as a not punt. Otherwise, this could have been like a 10 nil way we're going. <laughs> um, opponent checks. We have an obvious, obvious, very clear bet. Um, I wouldn't mind going slightly bigger here. Uh, but, you know, that can't be too bad when we lock up the board. I do think our opponent's going to be continuing, up, continuing a whole bunch. So I think we could probably size up a little bit, especially when we're like ever so slightly deeper. So we don't struggle to get money on the turn, uh, on the river, sorry. Um, but obviously when we use the sizing, we're probably going to be doing a bunch of obeying on the turn. Is that right? Um, to get not money in. Some, yeah, not 
really something that's a massive part of my game. Certainly at this point, it's something I've started exploring more. I think when you size yeah, down on, recently. on the flop, you're going to want to size up quite significantly on the turn to be able to set up okay. stacks. Otherwise, you have some awkward you know, situations. And this just seems like a pretty good card too. I mean, based on his stack size, we're probably okay to just go like quite large, but not necessarily over bet, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the stack size is not as, deep, not as deep as what my brain was telling me, but I think for sure go some, going something like 25 to 30 here. Yep. Um, seems pretty reasonable. Um, somewhere around 25 looks pretty good in terms of SPR. Seems fine to me. Um, and... I'm definitely thinking of thinking of the size of the bet on the river when I'm calculating. That. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. maybe maybe I want to size up a little bit just to make it that little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, um, for the river to get called. But yeah, def I definitely misspoke on the overbet. This is this is not obviously for stack size. It's not a spot where you'd want to overbet. Um, and yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So the sizing on the flop, obviously. It's fine. I think we can go maybe slightly bigger, maybe not 50%, but just a tad larger. But I don't think it's too much of a problem. Okay. So, so, so let me, let me start here. Mm -hmm. My, my philosophy, I suppose, tends to be that I am willing to value on myself now and then, because I think people call too much. I think it's, I think it's, a, f a fairly accepted truth that people call too much in the micros. So sometimes I might value on myself. Mm. Now, whether or not that is justified is is why we're here. Well, let's think about what what kind of hands our opponent's going to have, right? So we have ace ten, which means that our opponent's not going to have tens very often, and he's not going to have obviously probably aces are going to fast play at these stack depths, um, almost always, right? These opponents. Yeah, he's gonna have ace ten himself. Uh, he's not gonna have stuff like ace deuce. He's not gonna have stuff like ace seven. He's not gonna have stuff like ace eight. Ace kings in a four bet. So now we're looking at pretty much ace jack and ace queen, yeah. right? That we want to that we we're targeting with this jam, which I assume we are doing. <laughs> um, yes. Pretty much ace queen and ace jack. Now, if I'm sitting here with ace queen and ace jack, I don't think I'm calling. Right, so not only do we have to target a hand, they have to be able to call. He'd have to probably have a club, um, as well as an ace. So that's even less that we're targeting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll call and we'll chop. Sometimes he'll call and we'll have tens. Well, but not very often, but sometimes. And then, a, and then a bunch of times, buddy, he's just gonna have a flush, you know. So it's not about what his range is on the river that's fine like we can beat a lot of hands that play this way but can we beat a lot of hands that call yeah the answer is no i think the, the, yeah i say yes as in i understand what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. yeah, no, not yes we can be loads of, loads of calls um when we call let's ask the question when you get called here how often are you going to be good um so as i was saying I think people call too much, and it might be that this is an exercise in proving me wrong. So you're asking for Maybe ace jack, ace queen to call here, right? Is that what you? Yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. I think, or that's... even ace king. I think people probably play ace king too passively as well. I think, I think you get flat called by players playing that position, ace king. Okay, so maybe we give him half by, the ace king. But the, yeah. <sighs> the, the problem also is like remember how we said we block aces that beat us. We also block ace x. You know. So there is less of it in there. And I do think that, you know, obviously we don't have the stats up, but I do think that general players are going to do some four bank with Ace-King here, right? So while I agree with you, especially out of position, I think I expect Ace-King to go for some 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 three, some three four bets, right? Pre-flop. Yep. Um, I think this is, while it sucks, too thin. Okay. It's on the very borderline of punt. It feels nitty for a check. It does. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a maybe there's a bet fold. Maybe I'm overcomplicating it by thinking that way. Yeah. But I, I am gonna, I am gonna go. Oh God, it's so. I think this one's pretty damn close. I'm gonna go with punt, honestly. <laughs> um, just because I don't expect General Paul to call down with Ace Queen and Ace Jack enough for you to to be to be printing money here. It it depends. If this guy's an absolute whale, then it's fine. Pretty much unknown at the time. Right, right, unknown. Then I don't. Th I don't think I'm going for it here. Okay. Um. Now, when he does this, this is the point. When he does this, how happy are you? 
I mean, I shoved to get a call. I'll be honest. Okay. Uh, that was the aim. It was it was a value bet. No, it may not have been a good one. There obviously aren't like that many club combos. The problem is like how much, not just how much of his range that has clubs gets to this river. Some of it will check raise. Not just how much of it gets to this river, but how much will call that is club that is clubs compared to how much that will call, which is like ace queen or ace jack or maybe ace king, as you say. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can have pocket tens as well, which isn't folding. Um, so I think this one's really close. It's going to be come down to the player against an unknown or against the reg. I think this is going to be a fold or sorry, a check. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think I expect him to have queen, king of clubs. Cool. <laughs> 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 but so this is this is the thing i was like surprised to see that right because that that hand especially i think is as good of a check raise as he has hmm. uh, so, which is why i'm thinking like this is the way that the pool plays this is why you can't be surprised to see people call you down with a bear ace why you, you see people flat with ace king out of position versus a three bet and stuff like that hmm. So uh, you know, maybe maybe there's this this doesn't necessarily defend the hand to the extent I would like, right? Um, and and he'll turn up with lower flushes as well. But I I would expect that to get check raised. I would check raise that. He could have some lower flushes for sure. He wouldn't want to raise the flop with like five four of clubs if he had it right, or seventy six yeah, sure. of clubs if he had it. Um, would he do some turn folding? Probably not. It depends. You know, he's he's still got a little bit back, so like a pot size SPR on the river. So I don't know. Um, this is close, but I am sticking to my guns with punt. <laughs> Let's grab hand number five. So Steve's tried to get out of this one, but we're not having it. So here is ace nine of diamonds, um, a limper and we isolate, which I think is good. And limper calls ace four king. And against the limper, I think we will probably just start with bet. We could probably go a little bit bigger, but it seems fine. He will call. Turn king, this is a pretty easy check. Yep. And river seven. Oh, for goodness sake, Steve. <laughs> Would you just say that? Do you just not like money? Um, I like to keep people honest. Right. <laughs> Honestly, just jamming every king they have in their range and you paying them off, you mean? I thought my turn check back was good for that reason. And then... At some point in this, in between the turn check back and the river decision, the um, problem the problem is like people just don't do this without it. They really don't. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and even if they do, they get to win eight lines against us. Yeah. Right? How how often is the reward going to be? Obviously, if we win, that we get one hundred and ten blue blinds. Woo, woo, but you know, like, how often are we going to be good here? Like, almost never. I mean, this is a categorical punt. Um, yeah. And Penn has King Jack, which is a huge surprise to everybody involved. <laughs> okay, guys, that was part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two will be coming very soon. Um, just want to say thanks for all the support. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do consider doing so. It does take me a lot of time to make these videos, so I really appreciate support. And um, for now, that's going to do it, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.